welcome to the fourth video in the series, the Business Mistakes Manifesto series of videos which I'm doing. Uh, we have uh, so far covered an awful lot of ground in the first three videos around business and marketing and sales mistakes. And uh, just to show you what we have covered, uh, we are looking at the following. So I'm just gonna bring myself in here. Hello everybody, how are we doing? Uh, so basically we covered all of these things in the business mistakes. It was amazing how, how um, uh, what a great result uh, or response I've had from outlining these business mistakes. Everybody's like, oh yeah, I'm making at least several of those, if not all of them. Uh, so, uh, so we were talking about the, um, uh, all of the various mistakes, so business mistakes, thinking that everybody wants to buy your thing, they wonder why, and then you wonder why they don't, and you don't bother asking them, uh, you kind of panic and start looking for a job, you don't have a business plan, it's all the usual kind of stuff. Uh, we then talked about the marketing mistakes, all of the, the biggest mistakes which people are making in marketing, uh, and um, uh, so go and check out those videos, um, I'll link back to the previous ones as well so you can see all five videos once the whole series is out um, and I'm going to be doing the last one of the series as well today, um, so not just this one, so uh, all of the sales mistakes that people are making, uh, you can go back and check that video out, but today we're going to be talking about the systems mistakes. Um, now most people when they think about sort of systems mistakes, they, they're thinking like automated, like software um, uh, computers, laptops, like technology. So there's a bit of that, but also we're actually just talking sort of general business systems and processes. So the first one is that you don't actually have any systems in place. So this is even a business plan is a system of sorts, okay? But actually, like all of the things that you do in a day-to-day -day basis on your business, so right through, like imagine your customer journey, through meeting somebody, collecting business cards, adding them into a CRM, like nurturing that person, setting up meetings, uh, delivering your product or service, like all of those actually, they have a system whether you've written it down or not. But most people, I don't believe it becomes a system until you actually document it. So most people just don't bother writing this stuff down, which is just ridiculous because if you get hit by a bus and you've got a, um, a, a team, for example, or you've got a hand, there's some succession planning, you're exiting the business or whatever, um, who, who's going to know what, what it is that you've been doing or what your business is supposed to be doing? You know, how do they know how to behave? How do they know what to do? So it's really important to, um, to document everything you do and put it down into some kind of a system. Uh, the next one, and this is the most important one in my opinion, like the most, the most important function in business is sales. If you don't have sales, if you don't sell any products or services, you don't have a business. Um, the next thing that happens in order to get sales is marketing. So if you're not out there marketing and tracking the people who you're marketing to, the prospects as they come in, um, well then your conversion rate is going to be terrible. Um, so basically a, a CRM, customer relationship management tool, is there in order to monitor your leads coming from marketing and your sales conversions. So if you don't have a CRM, CRM in place, I mean it may be that you've just got a very simple spreadsheet or I know people who have like a, a gate tally system on a whiteboard behind them or something along those lines. So, But at least have some kind of a basic system for tracking your leads and sales. Because if you don't know the numbers that are running around in your business, then you're not going to know, you won't have a benchmark to... Um, um, uh, to compare performance against, like key, uh, you know, against key performance indicators. Like if you have a business plan, you set goals, set financial forecasts, but you don't have any way of monitoring it. How are you going to know whether you've succeeded or not um, against your goals? So get some kind of a CRM in place. I recommend Insightly. It's absolutely fantastic. But there are lots of other ones out there from sort of very basic like CRMs, that, like Mailchimp, uh, Get Response, and those sorts of things. Although those are technically outbound emailing applications, uh, right up to the likes of Infusionsoft and Salesforce and HubSpot and all those kind of really high-end ones. But for most businesses, something like Insightly would be absolutely perfect for it. Uh, what have we got up next? Oh yeah, this is this is more of a mindset thing. So everybody believes that um, systems should be easy, right? You know, is is got to get this whole thing automated. We don't want to get involved in like sales and marketing and all that stuff, sort of stuff. Let's just have a a lead magnet with a download, and it goes into Mailchimp, and then people can just self-select themselves in or out. And do you know what happens through that? For some people, that works. Ninety-nine percent of people, it doesn't work. But even for those who it works with, they end up with clients who aren't the right clients. Okay, so. You need a you need some kind of automation, but it needs to be much more of a semi-automated approach, so that you still got that human-to-human -human contact like happening. 
Um, and basically, everybody's always like, oh, the internet should make, should make automation easy, right? Should make systems easy, right? We've got all these tools, should be easy. Uh, the reality is like when you have to, like businesses nowadays actually re rely on several different tools, like so what we call software as a service tools, you know, like um, Zero and QuickBooks for accounting, for example, like MailChimp for outbound email marketing, Insightly for your CRM tool. Like all of these different tools need to speak to one another. And actually the process of getting them set up and semi-automated and speaking to one another is, is actually really, really difficult. But that's why there are experts out there now who specialize in this sort of stuff. So let's get some experts in, right, to help us out. You know, um, I'm, I like to think of myself as very adept when it comes to like systems and technology. I still get people in to come and help me out do this stuff. My VA is absolutely awesome. Um, you know, she understands this stuff left, right and centre. Um, she's more than just a VA. You know, she, she, she's just a whiz when it comes to setting up systems. Ah, oh, it's better. Um, the next thing is a bit of an excuse, really. Um, I'm just not techie. I don't understand this stuff. I'm just not techie. Therefore, I'm just not going to do it. I don't need it in my business. Um, and again, like, you know, if you're going to be behind 99.9% .9 of people if you just choose not to ad adopt technology in your business. Now, again, don't get me wrong. There's always some outliers. There will always be people out there who will say, oh, I don't have technology. I don't have Facebook. I don't have like one of these smartphone things. Uh, I don't use Zoom calls, like I can just pick up the call and my business is fine, I don't, I don't have a website. There will always be outliers and businesses. If you're one of those, like I don't want to hear from you. Like, and, and I mean that with the greatest respect. I don't need people to be telling me, oh, I'm one of those people it doesn't work for. Like, you know, there's actually, you might be, you're an outlier, okay? Um, if you have a business that doesn't rely on technology. Pretty much every business these days relies on technology and certainly here in the UK stroke EU, um, we're going to have something called Making tax, di tax Digital coming into play in the next couple of years. And what that means is you're going to have to be doing quarterly returns rather than an annual return. It will be a quarterly return in line with VAT. So um, like as we have to do VAT, every, um, do VAT returns every quarter. So it will be the same for your business accounts. And that's going to be virtually impossible. Like it's just going to be such a headache for a lot of people who aren't adopting technology. So saying you're not tech tech not techy enough for this stuff is just an excuse like you can't again like I said before in the previous video you cannot delegate responsibility um, you need to understand this enough in order to be able to instruct somebody how else how to do it uh, this is the next thing so now, now we've overcome that excuse and like now we're adopting technology and um, the technology breaks and so we just stop doing it like we're just like oh well technology's broken so I'm, I'm not going to bother with it um, so now it's just become to that point of where like it just stops us from from moving forward and making progress so the simple thing is go and find somebody who can help you do it there's also this like really awesome um, piece of technology it's called Google so and YouTube so you can just dump onto Google and YouTube and um, you can find out how to do the thing that's not working with your technology okay so so that's all we want to do um what else uh oh we have no systems to manage our time sorry you have no systems to manage your time i do uh rem or remind you to do things so you are um just kind of like uh you're kind of you've got all these activities you do in your business on a daily basis but actually you kind of just jump from one to the next with no real sense of organization basically and you get to the end of the day and you think what have I achieved? I don't feel like I've achieved anything. So um, so what we want to do is we want to get some kind of a system in place. Now, the system that I recommend is something called a default diary. So tap me up if you want to know more about the default diary. I think I've even got a video somewhere on my YouTube channel um, about a default diary and how to use it, what activities to plug into the, the, um, the YouTube channel. Um, and then you need a tool to remind you to check your default diary. Okay, so something like Todoist that just sends you an email notification like every single morning gives, gives you an email summary of the things you've got to do today. Okay, like human beings aren't really designed to be organized. We, we're designed like based on, uh, you know, being on the plains of like Africa or somewhere really cold, like with saber tooth tigers chasing us. And all we've got to, all we were designed and programmed to do was to work out whether we can fight it and kill it or 
whether we should run away from it if we can run away from it fast enough or we're just so petrified of it we stop doing it so this is like the previous one so if your technology breaks you just stop doing it um now the reality is like nobody's going to die in business like if you just have a go at doing this stuff and it doesn't quite work out it's not a disaster like you might accidentally send an email out to the 250 people on your mailchimp list hey it's no big deal it's another touch point they'll go what what the hell was this and you'll be like that's fine you know oh sorry i just made everything like go wobbly and shaky there um so yeah so basically you just need some very basic like practical systems or tools in place to manage your time better in the the, the hours uh, during the week which you work and then something to remind you to do those things basically um oh this is a good one and even if you do have those systems in and the, the reminders actually still just don't bother doing it uh so when we're again as human beings we're naturally designed to kind of move away from the stuff that we don't want to do um, so it's a natural instinct, but the reality is like in business, especially as a small business owner, if you're a solopreneur, a coach, consultant working on your own, um, or even a, just a small business generally sort of, you know, for any business basically, like, it doesn't matter what role you're doing. Um, so you've got these tools now that are reminding you to do this stuff and you're just like, nah, don't like doing that. But the reality is like small business owners, we are accountants, we are uh, sales people, we are marketers, we're delivering our products, so we're experts, um, we're like video experts, like we're, we're all of these diff we have to wear all of these different hats nowadays. Um, and basically we just need to get into good habits. Like most of this stuff you don't want to do. If you just focused on like doing one thing for 30 to 60 days, it would actually become an, a, a positive habit. You'd form a positive habit um, or ritual around it and you would look forward to doing it. So sometimes it's just about pushing through the tough stuff. Like it took me ages to get into the habit of like um, just churning out content, getting getting my content marketing together, doing the risk research, like finding ways of doing it totally efficiently. Um, and after a while, I was like, when I when my, my to-do list um, email comes through, to-do list email comes through in the morning, I'm like, cool, what's on that list today? Like, what's it going to give me? And I'm like, oh, a blog article, cool, I can chuck a, write, chuck a blog article, write a blog article, or do a video, cut and paste a video into that article, do a summary, and then let people watch a video. It doesn't matter. So we need to do the things, otherwise we are just not going to be successful. Oh, this, this is a good one. Now, it's kind of contradicts some of the stuff I said earlier on, but like, from a purely practical nature, if you're a startup business and you're um, you're a bit boot cash bootstrapped, so you don't have much money to be able to spend on outsourcing it, um, then what you can do is a lot of this stuff yourself. Um, but also, like, take it so far, and if you do get stuck, like, don't just use that as an excuse to stop doing it. Oh, I'm not technology minded. I can't do this thing. Like, there are plenty of people out there, like my VA, who can help you to get get to grips with technology basically. So do reach out and get help. Go onto Google, YouTube the stuff, please do persevere. Um, but don't use the fact, don't use the fact that you can't do it yourself as an excuse. Don't use the fact that you can do it yourself as an excuse because otherwise these, th these things, and I've been there, they just don't get done. Hey, that's why I'm sat here recording a video on a Saturday because best will in the world, I just had a busy week but I wanted to get this content out. So, you know, um, I, I can I can do this myself, but I have to have like I've got to be pushing myself to do it. Uh, what else? Oh, I don't do Facebook. This is similar to one of the earlier things. Like I'm not tech enough. Like I don't do Facebook. Bearing in mind, like almost well, well over a third of the world population is now on Facebook as a marketing tool. You are stupid if you're not doing Facebook. Like I get that you want like some kind of you know privacy. You don't want people to see what you're doing on a personal basis and stuff like that. But there are always ways around it. So you can just set up your personal profile, but then have a business group, a business page, things like that, that you can start to engage people in. You don't have to post anything to your personal like timeline. Um, you know, you don't want people to know things about you. Fine, well, just make all the posts private then. Like, you, you don't, you, you've got control over all of this stuff. And I'm not just talking about Facebook, Karen. I mean, I'm talking about Twitter and Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, YouTube, all of the different social media tools. Um, you know, the simple fact of the matter is that this is the way the world is going. The video, the world is moving towards video. Any platform which supports video, like Facebook, like Instagram stories, um, or Facebook stories nowadays, um, et cetera, et cetera, you have to be adopting that. Otherwise, you're just not going to get the same amount of profile that um, all of the other people in your industry are doing. Equally, if none of your industry are on Facebook, well, maybe that's not such a bad thing equally it could be quite a big opportunity 
So there we go. So there's the um, the systems mistakes manifesto for you. Um, if you want to know more about this stuff, like please do jump onto um, my fearless business group, or if you want to join the crew straight off the bat, like go to robinwaitecom forward slash fearless forward slash application, or you can head on over to fearless.biz. Uh, you can just join straight up and we'll get you in the group. So I'm going to help you to stop making these bloody mistakes. And, and when I say that, I mean stop making business mistakes, stop making systems mistakes, stop making sales mistakes, because like stop doing the things that are sabotaging your business. Because if you can overcome this kind of self-sabotage and make your business more simple, more streamlined, you will have so much more fun running that business and enjoying your time doing so. Helping other people, like that's the main thing. I just wanna help as many people as I possibly can. So if you're interested in fearless business, it starts at 47 pound a month. I've got a one-to-one -one coaching program. Like, um, you know, get stuck in. Like stop making these bloody mistakes. Ah!